Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host uh, for the evening, and here in the room we have the Inside Movies Galore cast, uh, where um, we have the uh, one and only Dane, uh, Dustin, and the lovely Katie Cadaver. So, uh, welcome all. Thanks. Hey, man. So, uh, we are here to discuss the TV miniseries Creature, which was directed by none other than Stuart, Stuart Gillard from 1998. So, um, Dustin, uh, why don't you give us a little bit of a prize of uh, the Creature uh, per se? I missed almost everything you said beside the word creature. Well, at any rate, uh, the first time I saw this movie was when it aired on USA. It's sort of a companion piece to The Beast, which we saw last week, in that it was also a miniseries, and it's also a Peter Benchley story. Uh, the book it was named, the book was called White Shark, uh, which I've never got to read, but I do have a copy of, so that's on my summer list. Uh, it had creature effects by Stan Winston, which you can kind of tell when you finally get a good look at the thing. And I, it's not as, it's not as good as the Beast, but I remember seeing it when it was new, and I was, it's a bit older, I think nineteen, I think, yeah, it came out in nineteen ninety eight. I don't have memories of it as I did of that movie because um, it wasn't. I had seen a lot of monster movies after that, so it wasn't quite as special to me. Uh, but overall, it had a lot of moments that I remembered and really enjoyed, and I was I was happy to get to revisit it again. Uh, it's also a somewhat difficult to find a DVD. So when I saw it at I think Goodwill, I was like, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it has, the runtime is kind of long, uh, but for the most part, I mean, it's it's fine as a monster movie, and the creature itself looks pretty cool. So. It totally looked like a shark squatch, just saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I saw that video you sent me, and you were like, yeah, all right. Uh, actually, so, um. Uh, when I saw that album art, I was like, hey, it's the creature. Yes, the we're referring to the Shark Squatch of Rat Bat Spider's Night of the Shark Squatch. For those of you who are wondering, you can look up Night of the Shark, Shark Squatch on YouTube, and there's an 8-bit music video for the song. And um, some art, like it shows like a still picture of the album cover with some art. There's actually an app action figure for the shark squash too but i couldn't find a picture of it um but it's a lot hairier i guess um than it looks in the picture because it's actually like a sasquatch and a shark combined um but yeah i that's immediately what i thought of when i saw the first glimpses of the creature okay and uh what did you think of the uh, uh mini series katie um, it was kind of long-winded. I agree. Like, obviously they had to, to have it on TV for four hours, but it was like the drag on for me. Um, but I was entertained and I, I never saw the original Piranha movie, but Ryan has seen it and he's like, oh, it's like the same, um, general premise. And then I also thought it was very similar to Shape of Water, how it was you know, <laughs> kind of the same idea or this like military doing these secret things like obviously it branched off and went a different direction um but i immediately thought about that um correlation that had to that movie but um i was i was interested it kept me entertained um i saw you know obviously some couple well-known actors in there um so yeah the thing uh, the thing that i have to point out is that uh uh uh, craig t nelson who kind of had had some of the cast is uh is the guy who uh, plays the scientist father um and uh he was actually the father of the uh of the little girl in poltergeist right so uh, uh and coach 
and, he, was in, and he, was Turner, he was the villain in Turner and Hooch too. <laughs> well, okay, I guess that's a bit of a spoiler, but you know, Craig D. Nelson's been in some fun stuff. Dane, uh, why don't you uh, tell us uh, how did you uh, fare uh, with watching this uh, TV miniseries? Wake the fuck up, Dane. Dane still going to the bathroom. <laughs> Maybe. He said he was going to the bathroom and that he would be back. Maybe he never came back. <laughs> he's Maybe just, it's number two. <laughs> he's just like he's just like dead in there, and like we shouldn't be laughing about it. <laughs> I uh, I actually did have a I shouldn't be making that joke. I I did have a friend in high school who like overdosed in the bathroom. Uh, now I feel bad about myself. <laughs> um, well, we're all hoping for your safe return. Alrighty. Oh. So, um, ultimately, uh, where did we, uh, uh, where, uh, let me see, where are we? Uh, okay. So, um, once we wait for Dane to come, uh, uh, come back, um, uh, what, what did we think of the double character with, uh, uh, uh Espo Zito, the guy who played, uh, uh, werewolf, uh, the, uh, the guy who, lost his mind correct uh because he was so freaked out by the creature incident yeah i thought he was pretty good um like i liked how like he started off as just like a regular person and then like the guilt and shock of what he was involved in like just drove him mad like i thought that was cool and no, if I you want to talk was, like hiding from like he was doing it to hide cuz i thought well wouldn't wouldn't the Navy come looking for him or like he could just drift off into these islands and be forgotten about? I don't know. Seems like it, they'd be coming after him. I think it was kind of both. Uh because it seemed like it, it I don't know, it made me think of old man McGucket from Gravity Falls. Uh which it's sort of a long explanation, but basically um oh Dean's it's gone. Maybe he was having technical difficulties. He was and we were talking. And he was trying to talk. <laughs> he uh, was probably trying to talk back, like, "No, I'm not going to the bathroom," but we couldn't hear him. Like uh, one well, of the episodes. Well, anyway, um, that character in Gravity Falls is—he's this crazy man who lives in the dump. And as the series goes on, we find out that he was once a brilliant scientist who essentially slowly fried his brain until he got to where he was now, like, with his experiments. So that was that was a bit of the impression I got from uh, Werewolf. Okay. Um, if you want to talk in terms of acting, like, I thought the actor was pretty convincing. Like, it's hard for me to... I notice bad acting... I only notice acting if it's, like, really bad. Uh, and he was he was pretty good. So, mm -hmm. it's fine. <laughs> Oh hey, he was uh, he was Gus in um, Breaking Bad. That what? Actor. Yeah, Gus Fring or whatever. I thought he looked familiar. Holy shit! Yeah. I never put that together. Sure. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I didn't look it up to confirm, but he looks exactly the same. So I figured it was. Mm -hmm. He did. He does look like it. Now that someone mentions it, like in the beginning of the movie when his hair is short and he doesn't have any facial hair and he's wearing glasses, he's absolutely. Yeah, that's and at first I wasn't sure that was him when I saw him appear, you know, later on. But I I made the connection. I hear you. And uh I know that um one of the th uh, things that I noticed about the uh, uh the uh, miniseries is that uh the, there was uh definitely a lot to do with the uh um uh, with the island and uh, 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 um, like when the sun came to the island and uh, th there was like an initiation ceremony. Hi, Red Raven. How are you doing? Good. Hello. Can, can everyone hear me now? Yeah. Definitely. Okay, yeah. good. Wonderful. I like right. how we're in technical chaos on this episode. Yeah, sorry about that. I have no idea why my mic wasn't working. I could hear everything everyone was saying. So I was um, uh, the shark got you. Oh, he did, but I had to punch him in a 
nether region mm-hmm. or two. Um, so anyway, uh, how did I, I thought it was very, the, this mini series was very long. It was very drawn out. It didn't need to be mm-hmm. a mini series. I didn't hate it or anything. I didn't love it. It, uh, I like the creature a lot. Um, I like Craig T. Nelson as an actor. It didn't rip off Jaws nearly as much as I thought it was going to. And granted, it was a Peter Benchley book as well. So he didn't, but I was just glad that he as a writer didn't cannibalize himself too much and that the people who made the miniseries weren't trying to copy Jaws either. There were a few little overlaps, but nothing that was like too uh systemically uh, you know it wasn't like a systemic problem uh, but overall it was just kind of blah to me like and i did like the creature a lot but it's just like eh, i don't know it was it was cheesy and overlong neither of which in a good way <laughs> okay um and uh Rhett raven um welcome back to the show so uh, uh tell me uh um what was your uh was this a first time watch for you yeah, this was a first time watch. Um, I I liked it. I thought it was um, pretty long. <laughs> I had to watch it in two parts. You know, I watched half of it one day and half of it the next. Okay. But um, it reminded me of the movie we watched the week before, The Beast. Yep. Yep. Except it was, you know, just a different creature. Okay. I found the two movies very similar. I th- I thought so as well. Uh, well and the uh, the, re- the reason why is um, uh, uh, both of the uh, both of the um, mini series were actually um, uh, based on Peter Benchley novels, and uh, I- I'm not sure. Uh, uh, maybe Dustin can tell us a little bit about uh, how close to the novel. The uh, the uh, TV miniseries is. Have you read the novel for Creature? Um, it's called the novelization of Creature is called White Shark, and I have not gotten to read it. I ha- I do have it, but uh, like I said earlier, it's in my summer reading list. Um, from the very minimal research <laughs> I did on it a, lo- a while ago, uh, the movie more or less follows the book from my understanding. Although I could be totally fucking wrong, so. <laughs> well, this this needed to be condensed down quite a bit. Like, I mean, I haven't read the Jaws novel, but I know that there's like a mafia subplot, which kind of explains why it, it helps explain why the uh, mayor of uh, Amity Island, why he's so eager to keep um, things under wraps as far as the shark attack yeah, on the that 4th is, of July. That That is a subplot in Jaws. Uh, there yeah. are a couple... There is... I think, the movie, and, and, I think the movie version of Jaws is actually better uh, yeah. because some of the subplots in the book just suck. Like the mob, the mafia subplot is good. Um, the Hooper sleeps with Brody's wife subplot is stupid. Yeah, that's that's the one I was gonna get to next. But it's like, why does that need to be there? And apparently, uh, Hooper was like this tall, blonde, sort of Aryan-looking guy, and then in the movie, he's much more what a, I would assume, what a marine biologist would actually look like and behave mm-hmm. like. And uh, so I just, and, and he's just a more interesting character in terms of how he's played and everything. So it's like, that's that's precisely the point I'm trying to get at here is like, that's what an adaptation is able to do well is that you're able to condense things, you can emphasize certain things not emphasize other things and sometimes it can lead to the work not being uh done faithfully to where it just kind of ruins it or and then sometimes you can really get at the meat of uh the story and all the fluff gets uh tossed aside in a in a good way because you get to actually experience what is what it was the story you know and uh (laughs) Which is funny because then I I didn't feel that way about say something like Watchmen where I hated the theatrical cut but I liked the, I really enjoyed the ultimate cut just because you mm-hmm. got to see the full scope of everything because in that story you kind of have to see the full scope in order to fully appreciate it 
but uh, it's uh, it's also dealing with a whole lot more depth mm -hmm. at its core than say this story was. So I mean, there's it's kind of unfair to compare those two, but mm -hmm. you you get my point. What's Tales, interesting? Tales of the Black Freighter was kind of difficult to reconcile if you didn't know about what what it was meant to be about from the comic. Yeah. So it just kind of appears. Yeah, I mean, the it's... people I showed it to were confused. I was like, "Oh, okay, I get it. That's well, what's in here." For but... the general audiences, probably the theatrical cuts probably okay, but like, it it just as a hardcore fan of that graphic novel, it's like I want to see the full scope of everything, and you know, because I, you know, obviously I read it and I know literary symbols and things like that, so it's like I like seeing that preserved. But some stories like Jaws, like this, don't have that much intrinsically going on. So it's like, well, you know, you can afford to trim the fat. Yeah, like the way Jaws is arranged, the book is in three parts. And so like part one is everything until they close up until they close the beaches. And then part two is almost entirely just like the on land drama before they go hunt the shark in part three. And uh -huh. Jaws the novel drags horribly in part two. Like the story essentially grinds to a total halt. Like it, it's it sucks. <laughs> it really yeah. does. Um, and luckily, that's clearly what they om omitted a lot of when they uh, made the movie. I think the mafia is... plot could have could have worked to an extent, but yeah, they're, well, they're I mean, probably it, it did... better at omitting omitting it, like you said. Well, it didn't. It didn't necessarily. Like it provides better reasons for why the mayor does what he does, but at the same time, sometimes like small, t big time politicians, small time politicians doesn't matter. Sometimes you know if if or people people in any kind of authority position, if they dig their heels in uh, to whatever environment that they're in, they they don't want anybody messing with their territory or tradition or anything like that, and so. I mean, that's that's pretty clear human behavior. Um, and in this case, just to transition more into this film, I didn't, luckily, I didn't see a whole lot of bleed over from Jaws. I mean, I did see a little bit of like, okay, another marine biologist is one of the heroes, and you have, uh, you know, uh, an island, uh, it's an island, and you have the, the island, the native islanders who, are all wanting to hunt the shark, you know, and they do, and it's not the right shark. Oh, let's cut it open to see if it is the right shark. And it's like, you know, I've seen that and before. You're satisfied uh, with the shark, uh, at least mm -hmm. until somebody gets killed, you know. It's, yeah. It, it, yeah. That that was like the big the big part. I was like, oh, gee, I've seen that before. But luckily, no. it, it didn't go full tilt like I was hope, hope I was fearful it would. The thing that I saw is that there were three romantic entanglements. There was the uh, 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 there was the romantic entanglement of uh, the husband and the estranged wife, uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, well, I don't even think that they were married. Uh, I think that they just had a kid together. And they, they were they were divorced. Yeah, they were divorced. Okay. So uh, we, we had the uh, them uh, 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 two. Uh, plus, we had the the man Friday kind of man who uh, is the scientist's, you know, best friend and advocate, uh, advocate helper on, on him uh, making sure that all these sharks are tagged. And, and then you, you, and his Island woman. And uh, then of course, then you've got the son and his romantic entanglement with the, uh, with the uh, chief's daughter of the island, so uh, t t to me, I saw I saw three romantic, uh, uh, you know, relationships throughout <laughs> the film. Uh, but I feel like some of the storytelling of e of each of those were kind of, I don't know, stretched thin. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. Like it, it they did feel kind of included to increase the runtime. Uh, although it did kind of, it seemed like it, almost like an attempt to do more characterization like they had with Beast, uh, and I think it worked okay, just not as what, just not as good. Like, if I had to summarize this movie, I would, th I think I would just say 
like Beast, but not as good. If anyone had a favorite scene, uh, what would it be? Oh, mine... I can think of mine pretty easily. It's um, when, like... You guys remembered, like, the kind of douchey uh, like poacher slash big game hunter guy, right? Okay. Um, yeah. My favorite, my favorite scene is when he's, you know, he talk, he's talking tough to Craig T. Nelson. It's like, yeah, his head's gonna look great on my wall, you know. Uh, like, you know, oh, it's just a dumb animal. I can just go out there and kill it. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> it leads him into, so it's been stealing his fish traps, and it makes a giant trap for him underwater and lures him into it and gets him. And I loved that like so much. Okay. Like, oh, it's just a stupid animal. It's smart smart Katie, enough to kill you. Katie, if you could think of a, a favorite moment in the uh, TV series that you could uh, um, point out, uh, what would it be? Oh, they all kind of, I don't know. There was no like big kills that were really, I think the, the um well without a uh, spoiler alert you know when they when they put the creature in that pressure tank thing and <laughs> explode it that was kind of cool okay. um in, in terms of like creative way to kill something um so i, I kind of dug that uh, but overall i felt that you know the the shark attacks like <laughs> i was anticipating like oh it's going to be gory but then of course it's a tv miniseries and it's not gory at all. It's just red water. And I'm like, oh, darn. So I, there was a few times where I had high expectations. And then I was like, oh, yeah, it's not going to happen. So I, what I'm trying to say is they all sort of, all the scenes where there was excitement kind of fell flat for me. And there was no great, like, special effects. You didn't get a lot of glimpses of the shark squatch till the end. So, and then, you know, when it, you did start to see more of it, like, I was trying to look at it and trying to, see how the special effects looked and stuff and the mouth was really cool but yeah there was nothing that really stood out in terms of scenes at all for me you could see a lot of alien and pumpkin head in it because stan winston <laughs> yeah that's that's the thing uh stan winston uh, i noticed that uh, he was behind the creature effects and uh, uh, as uh, uh red raven um if there was a uh moment in the uh tv series that you could say was a favorite moment of yours? Um, I would say I think it's kind of towards the end where they're all like in a house and the one girl's like, there's no shark. That's not true. And then like two seconds later, it comes out out of the uh, the floor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was pretty great. Uh Okay, um, Dane, uh, if there was a favorite moment that you could say uh, that, uh, from the long drawn out uh, ness of this uh, that you thought that, uh, and I know that your thoughts on this, uh, that it could have been tightened, but uh, what uh, what is the favorite moment that you could say? Um, well, any any time that the creature itself was on screen and particularly an effect that I liked was uh, when he's kind of first evolving or first uh, changing and adapting, uh, when he like is starting to shed shed his skin and is like vomiting and that kind of stuff, it's like I I, I thought that was I like the idea that it's a painful process for the creature, and I like that because um, a lot a lot of the times when you see. It, especially like in anime, you always see uh, a villain like changing forms, or it's like, oh, this is my next, my next form, my final form, you know. And they always just kind of do it. And I, I like can the one more time than my brother can. Pretty Whoa. much, yeah. But I like the idea that uh, I like the idea that it's like a painful process uh, and it's something that's not exactly fun to go through, but it's something that happens just by the way that it's made basically that was, my, that was my runner up too like you could tell it was a strain on the animal and then the reactions too it wasn't supposed to do that ah! yeah. exactly but i think that's kind of refreshing and i'd like my, to see i'd like to see more things like that uh my thing that i uh, 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 see um i'm a hell of a lot more uh used to 
the TV miniseries and watching them uh, uh, because I tend to like length. Uh, um, for some reason, uh, I I enjoy I thought, it. But, but David, I thought you were more of a girth guy. What do you mean a girth guy? You know. <laughs> oh boy. This is, this is reminding me of uh, another podcast where they read excerpts from this poorly written book, and it's talking about describing the main character. He was 260 pounds in his underwear and <laughs> shoes, and then the guy's reading that just like, you know, with thick, fascinating hands. Cut. <laughs> that, was, that was another one like <laughs> that they included in the actual book, like his big, warm hands. <laughs> And the, po- the guys, the guys doing the podcast were like thick, vascular. I guess I kind of like. Well, you gotta, you gotta, re- okay, you gotta read or watch. You gotta watch this video of someone doing a dramatic reading of a romance book called Rough and Ready. It is, <laughs> it is the funniest thing you will ever see in your life. <laughs> All right, continue, David. Well, in any case, I kind of like the premise. Uh, uh, well, you know how the, uh, how the shark was um, uh, ultimately mixed with uh, dolphin and uh, shark, right? Mm-hmm. Well, well um, I kind of like were, the, There were the, multiple ones. The, the ones that it kills in the beginning were dolphin and shark, but this one was human and shark. It was, it was that know. experiment and, taken to the next extreme. And, the, and they didn't exactly entirely touch on what else they might have mixed in with the shark. So uh, when I first saw this, uh, uh, and I saw this uh, back when it was on like USA or or or, or a, a, a similar channel, so um, Me too. I remember th- uh, 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 thinking, okay, they were go- uh, coming back from that lair where where all the experiments were done in that bunker, and uh, they were coming back from the hallway, and all of a sudden they turned around, and the shark was mutating. Okay, he mm. was mutating into something that could stand on two feet. That had, at that point in time, I had never seen anything like that. So, uh, to, uh, to me, I looked at that in awe and wonder, and I saw that thing uh, try to climb up the damn ladder after them. And that I thought was cool at the time. So, uh, t- uh, to me, even though I know uh, there was no gory part, parts that uh, go splat. You know, uh, uh, where all of a sudden you see, like, people explode into a million pieces and eyeballs strewing all over the place. You know, you're not, you're, uh, even though you didn't see any of that kind of th- uh, uh, thing, that was, uh, to me was uh, was awesome at that time. And to me, it still held true this time. I, I guess I enjoy, enjoyed it more than anybody here. <laughs> oh no, I love that too. I mean, this movie did honestly have a lot of moments that I really enjoyed. <coughs> and the creature itself from the time period I first saw it was pretty unique to me too, and it still kind of is, like how it morphs into something different. I can't really think of something else where that of another film where that really happened. And to think that the military guy, uh, uh, a guy who comes in and uh, uh, and he's like, uh, 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 "Don't worry, we'll take care of it." Yeah, he's just also, like that damn poacher. Like he just dismisses what the creature he is was, like. He was also, he was also the evil entity that uh, that uh, had come to take the children away in Storm of the Century. He was. His, uh, yep, he was Andre Lenoge. Neat. <laughs> So uh, uh, noticing the di- uh, the different people from different uh, different places, even the guy who, who played werewolf, he uh, he he, uh, he um he's played in um, multiple th- uh, uh, things. Dane mentioned Breaking yeah. Bad. That's right. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, it was a uh, Gus. That's the thing I was I was telling uh, my girl, <laughs> telling her um, that Gus Fring from Breaking Bad is in the movie, and he's like not scary at all when in breaking bad he's like the the big bad guy for most well, of I it. kept expecting well, him to really be secretly not crazy like it was all an act cuz you know he was trying to manipulate something or whatever but no wasn't that interesting <laughs> well and, um he pretty was, normal towards the end um he also played uh in uh, once upon a time in the, the, the first couple of seasons where he played um, the man who was the man in the mirror when the, mm. 
when the witch was actually uh, uh, the evil witch was actually uh, talking to her lover, uh, who was uh, always set, uh, said mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all. So, uh, I don't know if anyone watches uh, Once Upon a Time like I do, but <laughs> um, I tried to start it, but it was it was pretty long, and I ended up having other stuff to do. I want to see it at some point, though. I mean, it's it's supposed to be pretty good. Uh, he was also on a two season thing called Revolution, where it was uh, uh, where, where it was a uh, like something uh, something happened and the world ended, and, uh, and there was a group of survivors who had to travel the land and piece together like uh, some kind of secret thing to uh, to keep the world alive. It, it was kind of like uh, you know, kind of like Water World ish, uh, but. Uh, Ultimately, I enjoyed uh, watching this uh, TV miniseries again, uh, again. Did anyone else have anything else to add? Um, not really, no. Okay. Well, um, if no one else has anything else to add, and I appreciate uh, you all being on this uh, uh, podcast with me, even though it was relatively long and excruciating, but... Uh, Hey, now, we've, we've reviewed way fucking worse movies, and you know it. Uh, and we're going to uh, review, uh, review much more fil uh, films in the future, too, so we're going to cover all of that. <laughs> Wait, what are we doing next week? Uh, we, had, we had floated doing Manhunter because of William Peterson. Uh, we had floated doing, uh, doing Manhunter, or um, uh, we could st uh, still follow along the lines of Peter Benchley and watch The Deep, which was uh, another... Uh, film that was based on a Peter Benchley film. Or, uh, a Sounds book. like it's another fish movie. <laughs> <laughs> we made a lot of aquatic movies. Kind of over it. Yeah, let's yeah, do well, something very different. Um, we, you know what? We could do so, uh, something different and do Man uh, Manhunter if we wanted to, uh, to. That way we could do something different and then we can go back to you know following the, the fish Tales as we uh, le uh, as we probably eventually lead into talking about Jaws, even though you guys, spoiler alert, talked about it. Well, we didn't talk we about didn't talk the that ending. much about it. <laughs> Jaws is fine. I mean, if we're gonna watch a, another fish movie, Jaws is fine. Well, that's but, what know. I was gonna say. Like, if we're gonna do another one of those, it might as well be Jaws because we're gonna. Yeah, have to Jaws talk gets the pass. Well, I'm 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 leaving. Uh, uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about all the films surrounding Jaws is so that we uh, we could build up to it, you know. So yeah, good idea. So, uh, um, but uh, because William Peterson was actually in the Beast last week, he was actually in the original film that uh, that was based on the Red Dragon novel, uh, 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 done by Thomas Harris, which would start the uh, our trail into doing Silence of the Lambs and so on and so forth. So. Yeah, I Sorry, are we at a fork in the road or what? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little confused. So, uh, do we want to do the deep or do we want to do uh, Manhunter? I'd be okay with Manhunter. I've got the really nice like Shout Factory one, and I honestly enjoy it quite a bit. So, I, okay. I'm down yeah. for Manhunter. Okay, sure. I will find uh, where my copy is, and I will. Uh, It'll be an excuse will... to listen to the soundtrack again because it has an awesome fucking soundtrack. All right. I don't think I've seen. Is it a Swedish movie? Like, is it Man subtitled? Yeah. Uh, no, Manhunter is a U.S. movie. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, think I haven't seen it. I think it's eighty-four, eighty-six. Um, Something like that. Yeah. It's it's uh yeah. it's an American film. Yeah. Yeah. I don't it's, think I've seen it. And it's, it's a on, very uh, underrated it's on, film. It's, it's a on a Shout Factory. Movie. It's a Shout Factory I don't release. Know. I wonder if Ryan has it. I don't know. I have it. Ryan people. might have it. Yeah. The guy who plays. The guy who plays Hannibal Lecter is not Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, he's someone totally Brian, different. Brian, Brian Cox. He so, does a good job. Just, he does a pretty good job too. He's a good actor in general. Alrighty. Well, yeah, it's funny. I've not seen any of the Silence of the Lambs like movies. I've watched the Hannibal TV series though. Oh, well, well, Silence of the Lambs is one of my favorite movies of all yeah. time. Yeah, it's, it's one, one of, of those it's that one of the I've best movies of all time. To. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, then we can I have definitely. No doubt, I'll enjoy it. 
And, and uh, I just got I just got a vote with, uh, from Brandon. He he agrees with Manhunter. So uh, yeah, uh, I I guess it's a, a good for a go with Manhunter. So I will find my copy, and my copy is actually a limited edition two disc Anchor Bay thingamabobber. So uh, evidently they came out with numbered copies of Manhunter uh, on Anchor Bay. And, uh, they did that for their fancy editions, I think. Yep, they did. Uh, because I have I have two copies of that Wicker Man wooden box and there are and they're numbered. <coughs> Alrighty, so um, let's start with uh, Kitty. Um, Kitty, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from? Sure thing. I am Katie Cadaver from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm a body positive horror artist and alternative model. And you can find me at patreon.com slash Katie Cadaver or at Third Eye Open on Instagram. That's 3-R-D-E-Y-E-0-P-E-N. I'm also the makeup artist for <laughs> horror punk band Rap Bad Fighter. Um, their first album, Night of the Shark Squatch. <laughs> you can find that at ratbatspider.bandcamp.com. I'm also a dead girl for Dead Girls Dark Coffin Classics for a TV show. You can watch them at vimeo.com slash ddcc. I am also a performer and producer for Grindhouse Tees Burlesque. And you can find us on Facebook <laughs> at facebook.com slash Grindhouse Tees. And I am newly an editor for the Movies Galore site. Um, and you can check out my first review that I did of Adam LaHoulet's feature, The Backslide, which is a romantic comedy that is really good. Which uh, I appreciate. Oh, shit. I appreciated you coming on uh, uh, with uh, with me. I thought that was a very good interview and a very good uh, first uh, interview interview from you. So, uh, mm -hmm. listen to the uh, audio of it. I, I did. I did listen. Yeah, it it actually turned out really good, and I really liked everything Adam had to say. And um, it was nice to see that the questions that I asked really did produce some answers that I, I was excited to hear. So I thought it went really well, and I'm glad we did it. Cool. Um, uh, and uh, Red Raven, why don't you tell us a little bit about wh what you do and where you're from? I'm Red Raven, and I'm from Lake Geneva, and I'm a promoter in the Milwaukee area. And I'm also a dead girl at Dead Girls Dark Coffin Classics. And I have a show coming up on June 17th at the Frequency in Madison. Mm -hmm. We have four metal bands playing, uh, Repaid in Blood, Skyla, Chewing Teeth, and H1Z1. And that's June 17th at the Frequency in Madison and also it's going to be one of the last shows at the Frequency as it uh, the, the venue up there is closing on uh, June 30th. Wow. So it'll be one of your last chances to get to see uh, bands play up there. Oh, okay. Uh, so the, uh, that would be uh, technically on my birthday. So I'm, I'm not sure I won't be, uh, be, uh, be out there or whatnot, but uh, definitely check that out, folks. So, uh, Dane, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what yourself and what have you been doing lately? Well, um, I am <laughs> Dane Kyle. I'm a writer director based out of Charlotte, North Carolina, for right now. And uh, let's see, I've done a whole lot lately. I've uh, had feature. Uh, I've had appear uh, short films appear in two feature films. They're uh, two horror anthologies called, uh, one of them's called For We Are Many, and then they put out by uh, Hex Media, and then the other one is uh, called Clownsploitation, which will probably be uh, put out by Troma, if I had to guess, because they've, they're the, it was made by the same people who did uh, Grindsploitation, and the, the trilogy box set just came out. Um, and uh, from what I understand, the uh, Grindsploitation 4 actually just uh, just came out today on VOD. Oh, so, nice. Um, yeah, because there's, there's four of them now. Yep. <coughs> so. But, um, yeah, that's a big deal. And then I've got, like, a short film called The Big Blind, which I just um, submitted to, like, five different festivals. And um, next month, once I get some more money, I'll submit it to probably five more and 
just kind of go down the line, try and get it out there and see what happens. Cool. Yep. All righty. Um, Dustin, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and where you're from? Well, I go to UW-Milwaukee and, uh, oh, fuck, what is happening? Turn down whatever the hell that is. Holy shit. Um, anyway, I go to UW-Milwaukee. I collect and watch horror movies way too much. Uh, I try to show off my collection at DHR Hunter on Instagram. Uh, so go ahead and follow me. I'm also an editor <coughs> for um, the Inside Movies Galore blog, although I haven't had time to really do anything. And my first review of a hey, Dane, could you stop whatever that is, please? Oh, um, I think it's just uh, dishes in the background. Could you not bang them right next to the mic? Well, they're not. They're far. The dishes are far away. <laughs> well, they're they're quiet now. Um, okay. Just... Anyway, uh, I have a review of last week's movie, The Beast. That's largely in. That's largely complete and should be posted soon. Uh, it's finals week, so I had to postpone putting it up. So sorry to everyone who was anticipating it last week. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna have it up there for you pretty soon, and we're excited. So, and it's going to be the first of many creature movie reviews that I plan to do this summer. So it's gonna be a great time. Very cool. And uh, my name is David Streggy. I uh, am the host for Inside Movies Galore. Thank you once again for the fantastic, noisy podcast <laughs> and uh i have some news uh, uh producer wise uh, uh, tomorrow the uh uh film that i have executively produced uh called wrestle massacre the trailer the official trailer is coming out tomorrow on youtube so definitely check it out i don't know what time it is coming out on youtube but definitely uh look for it watch it and uh, definitely keep a lookout for when it will actually be put out to the public. Uh, so, in any case, I have been your host for the end of this evening. Definitely stay tuned for another lovely podcast where we will be talking about Manhunter next week. So, uh, stay, uh, stay tuned, like, and subscribe. And uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed listening to our. Uh, Insane Bam. ramblings. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty. Everyone say goodnight. Good night. Good night. Good night.